International criminal court judges dealt a major blow to the Trump administration Thursday. It authorized an investigation of war crimes and crimes against humanity allegedly committed by Afghan government forces, the Taliban, and American troops. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo spoke out against the decision earlier. This is a truly breathtaking action by an unaccountable political institution masquerading as a legal body. It is all the more reckless for this ruling to come just days after the United States signed a historic peace deal on Afghanistan, which is the best chance for peace in a generation. Peace in Afghanistan has not lasted long after the Trump administration signed a deal with the Taliban over the weekend. On Wednesday, the U.S. military confirmed its first airstrike targeting Taliban fighters in the country. The Taliban has also reportedly renewed attacks on Afghan forces. At the same news conference earlier, Secretary Pompeo acknowledged the upsurge in violence in Afghanistan over the last couple of days, calling it unacceptable. Thomas Gibbons Neff is a reporter for The New York Times and a former Marine infantryman, and he joins me now from Washington. Thomas, thanks very much for being with us. Thanks for having me. So is any of the recent violence in Afghanistan a violation of the deal the U.S. just signed with the Taliban? Right. I mean, that's kind of where we kind of enter murky waters uh, as far as that's concerned, because the deal doesn't say particularly that the Taliban can't attack Afghan forces, but that leaves the U.S. military in Afghanistan in a difficult position of defending the Afghan troops and also trying to preserve the sanctity of the deal, because if, you know, the American military starts bombing the Taliban, the Taliban could turn around and start attacking American troops at the same time. Well, how many U.S. troops are set to leave Afghanistan in the short term? Uh, it's looking to go from around 12,000 troops there now to 8,600 in the next 130 or so days. And I know you've reported on this. How are veterans of the war feeling about this withdrawal plan? I mean, it's, it's difficult. I mean, my, my barometer for how, how veterans feel are kind of among my friends who served alongside of me. And I think at this point, many are, are tired. I mean, it's been... You know, 18 years. My my tours were in 2008 and 2010, and um, I mean, I think everyone wants to close the book and 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 move on. You know, to be able to to reflect on their war as you know being a chapter and not something that just goes on forever in the background. Was there surprise among some of your friends, and were you surprised yourself when you first got word of this? Uh, I mean, I, I for for myself, I, I mean, I'm I'm. Hopeful that that there can be some some kind of peace in, in the country as far as you know the, the violence in Afghanistan is is unprecedented and has been for um, for some time as far as the amount of civilians killed and the Afghan national uh, security forces are, have been killed in the tens of thousands since the Americans ended combat operations so it's hard not to be but at the same time you know it, the, the future remains you know, re really unclear. So uh, you were deployed to Helmand province in 2008, um, and I know you've continued to report, obviously, on the country. Uh, what is your sense about whether or not this deal could actually stay in place? I mean, that, that, that comes down to a lot of factors that are, that are far, far outside my lane. But, I mean, you know, what, what do they say about insanity? It's doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome. And, and you could say that's been the last 18 years of the American strategy in Afghanistan. So I have a hard time not, you know, putting some kind of, uh, you know, as a, as a veteran, some kind of vested hope in, in the fact that this could turn into, you know, something that could last a while. But again, that, that, that's something we're going to have to see. So President Trump earlier this week also spoke to one of the founding members of the Taliban for 35 minutes to mark the agreement. What has the reaction to that been? Uh, I, I mean, that, that, that kind of remains unclear. I think, it, you know, just social media, of course, saw that um, as pretty extraordinary. I'm sure uh, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani saw that as, a, as pretty extraordinary. Uh, but also at the same time, it, it, it seems kind of uh, on par for this administration, kind of doing things that you know, no one really expects. Uh, but I think, again, that that call was an, an attempt to, to smooth out some of the um, issues that, that, that came up immediately after the deal was signed, including uh, the prisoner release of up to 5,000 Taliban uh, held in, in Afghan prisons. So the Taliban and the uh, uh, government of Afghanistan are required to begin peace talks of their own by March 10th. 
Are there indications that that still appears to be on track? I mean, I think you know, going back to the prisoner release, I think that that seems to be the, the current issue, and I think that that's what uh, Trump's phone call and I believe uh, Zal Michalizad, the uh, chief envoy, has has met with uh, Afghan officials about that. You know, the the Afghan government sees that as a sovereign decision to release those those five thousand, and in and, and the the peace agreement itself, the Americans said they would uh, try to try to make that happen. So if that doesn't happen uh, before. March 10th, I, I don't really see the, the, uh, the so-called intra-Afghan negotiations starting on time. All right, Thomas Gibbons-Neff for us in Washington. Thomas, thank you very much for your time. Yep, thanks for having me.